Welcome back. You're watching Breakfast this morning with Sally Nugent and John Kay. Let's talk more now about the latest COVID developments this morning. We're joined now by the Care Minister, Gillian Keegan. Morning to you, Gillian Keegan. Thanks very much indeed for talking to us this morning. Uh, let's start with the rule change that we've been talking about already today, because I know lots of people at home will be really interested in the latest development. So the, if you've tested positive for COVID, you now don't have to isolate for 10 days anymore. That's come down to seven days. Can you explain the thinking behind this? Obviously, this is just for England that we're talking about at the moment. What is the science? behind this? Well, they've looked at the, the difference between 10 days isolation or doing a lateral flow test on six, day six and day seven. And if you get a negative lateral flow test on day six and day seven, um, then you can then uh, leave isolation. We're still saying to people be cautious, well, we're telling everybody to be cautious, but they basically looked at that and said that's equivalent risk to you stay in another three days in your bedroom. But it, it, we're using testing, to be honest, more effectively now. We're using testing as a tool to enable people to limit the disruption and to be able to uh, get on with their, their lives and their, and their jobs. Can you just explain to us what, what the science is that behind this? The, the science is if you do serial testing on day six and day seven, then you've got more information than if you just effectively make an assumption that, uh, you know, by 10 days you'll be gone. So the UKS security agency have looked at that and they've basically said serial testing is an equivalent risk to, uh, to, to 10 days. So they've been looking at that and they've been analysing that uh, for, for a while now. So that's uh, that's the science and that's where they've they've come up with it. I think this will be really welcome, uh, certainly for those people who now may be able to enjoy their Christmas lunch who couldn't. Yes, yeah, certainly for people who tested positive last Friday, it is it could make a significant difference to their Christmas, couldn't it? And in terms of the day six and day seven test, that will be lateral flow testing. And how is that then reported? Is that made official? Yes, day six, day seven, lateral flow tests, um, negative. And then obviously what we urge everybody to do is to go on the uh, Gov site and to upload your, your lateral flow uh, testing information because that really helps us as well in terms of data. So it's really important that you do that. So you're urging people to do that, but that's not mandatory, is it? So there is an element of trust here, isn't there? You're going to have to rely on people to tell the truth about their tests and to take the tests. There's always been an element of trust. You trust people to say when they've got symptoms. You trust people to come forward for a PCR test. You trust people to isolate whilst they're waiting for the results. You trust people to use lateral flow tests before they go to places. There's an, a huge element of trust. This is a national mission. And of course, we are all dependent on each other doing the right thing. And whilst we're on that, thank you so much to the nearly 30 million people who have come forward for their booster jab, because that is the right thing to do. And anybody who hasn't, please come forward. I know that lots of people will be waking up to this news this morning, perhaps, you know, thinking about their plans for Christmas and then potentially for New Year. I just want to be really, really clear with you what this means for people who might be isolating at the moment. How does it work? Does this mean that if you've tested positive today, then you have to wait? Or does this mean if you've tested positive last week, this comes in from now? It comes in from, from now, yes. So if you tested positive on Friday and you're partway through your isolation, then day six, day seven, take a lateral flow test. If you're negative, then you are allowed to leave isolation and just be uh, cautious. And we, can t we ask people to continue to take lateral flow tests anyway if they're going out, meeting people, uh, going to a crowded place or you know, to, to, to meet some uh, friends in a restaurant or whatever. So be sensible, use the test. We've got plenty of tests available. So use the test to, um, to be a useful tool to enable you to uh, socialise sensibly this Christmas. And what so yes, you, they will be able to go to, to, to go out. And what, what difference does it make if you are vaccinated or not vaccinated, or if you're double vaccinated and not had a booster? Um, well, if you're vaccinated or unvaccinated, it, it, it's, it's the same. You still have to take the test. Where the vaccination comes into, uh, where, where it's, it, it's useful, is for the contacts of people. So what we've said is if somebody you're in contact with is positive, uh, if you're already vaccinated, then you can s t continue to take a lateral flow test every day if you're a contact. But if you've tested positive, then it's the same if you're vaccinated or unvaccinated because you're positive then. So you use the same tools. And what is the thinking behind this change? Is it to help key people in key roles who are desperately needed at the moment to get back to work? Yeah, it's both. It's actually, to, obviously, we're concerned about that when you have lots of cases and people isolating. Um, we've heard about, you know, disruptions to various services. 
but also it's because we have now the testing and the, the quantity of testing we need to introduce this. If we'd have, inter you know, you need a lot of tests to be able to put these systems in place. You need a lot of tests to replace what we had previously, everybody isolating as opposed to contacts now, just daily testing. That you need a lot of tests for. So actually what's changed is the availability of tests, the fact that we've ordered a lot in advance and the fact that we're using them as a tool, the fact that the UK uh, HSA are testing you know, all of these various systems and then put sensible uh, approaches in place. But that's really what's changed. Um, I know everything is changing day by day. Um, we have checked this morning on the gov.com website and the current advice for people who are in a care home setting is this, that if you have tested positive for COVID-19, don't test again within 90 days. Is that advice valid? Does this new advice coming in today mean that that is no longer valid and the website needs updating? What's yeah, there, the there, fact there? Yeah, there are. I mean, obviously, this evolves all the time. And in fact, my parents are in that situation um, because uh, they, they, they had COVID and were, were given the, the same information. But of course, now what we're saying is, is you know, take, take the tests to be able to, um, you know, look at the lateral flow tests. I mean, they're 80 to 90 percent uh, accurate. So, you know, use those to to now see if you can come out of isolation. So, yeah, that advice has changed. So we had Boris Johnson last night, didn't we, confirming that Christmas celebrations can go ahead with this new announcement we've just been talking about. What is going to happen next week, though? I mean, every front page this morning of every newspaper suggesting that basically New Year is cancelled. We already know that Scotland have the restrictions. They've cancelled Hogmanay there. What's going to happen in England next week? Well, we have to look at the data. We get it two or three times a day. We spend a lot of time analysing it. We'll be working all over Christmas looking at that data. Um, you know, the, the unknown, there's a lot of uncertainty still in the data. And one of the things that is uncertain is this severity and the hospitalisations and the deaths, uh, unfortunately, from um, Omicron. So we're still getting a lot of data and it really will depend on the data. That's why we haven't come forward and said, you know, we, an we anticipate it, what it's going to be. We've said, we'll keep it under review. Have your Christmas, enjoy your Christmas. You, you know, we, we have to look. The cases are uh, quite high. You know, we've seen that they're doubling every couple of days. So the cases are high, but we still haven't got that link yet with the uh, with the severity. So there's still uncertainty in the data. And whilst there's uncertainty, what we wanted to do is be balanced and proportionate um, and not anticipate the data. We'll wait to get the data. OK. Um, in the meantime, the Politico website appears to have the data. Let me just tell you what they have posted today. They're saying that they have information from the UK Health Security Agency due to publish its data very soon. They're suggesting Omicron coronavirus is causing a milder disease than Delta in most Britons. The best news is that Britons who fall sick with Omicron are less likely to become severely ill. But there is a caveat. They're saying that obviously it's not necessarily mild enough to avoid large numbers of hospitalizations and that in the coming weeks, there could potentially be problems if infections rocket and large numbers end up in hospital, essentially negating the reduction in severity. Is that something you're hearing already? It seems interesting that a website has this information, but you don't have it. Well, I mean, as you said, it was some leaked information. I don't have that information, but I don't. Th I mean, I think it's 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 speculation, but it's also effectively that's what we've been worried about all along. When you've got large case numbers depending on the severity and also the vaccination status. What we know, and that's why we've really put our focus on the booster programme, which, you know, is, is being rolled out amazingly. What we know is if you get a booster and the more people that come forward to get boosted, which is the unknown as well, then the more we'll be building back that wall of protection. And it really is these moving numbers that we are keeping an eye on, as I say, a number of times a day. But please come forward, get your booster, because that is a very important step in being able to, um, to to combat this new variant. What is your advice this morning to people who might be watching this, perhaps people who run a pub, a restaurant, a bar, who have organised to have New Year's Eve parties next week? Perhaps this week already they will have ordered many thousands of pounds worth of stock for plans for next week. We know we're not going to hear anything until after Christmas. What would you say to those people today about the financial outlay in planning for a New Year's Eve party that might not happen? 
Well, clearly the uncertainty, one of the, the you know, hardest things for businesses actually all the way through this pandemic has been dealing with this uncertainty. And, you know, obviously they will have to look, they'll have to look at their bookings. I know some people are already uh, cancelling. We've, we've kept to our, to our uh, uh, reservations, but some people are because they're taking a more cautious approach. So it is really difficult. There is uncertainty. Obviously, they'll have to make a, a balanced decision based on, you know, their own, their own uh, analysis of the situation. But there is risk that we could get to, you know, after Christmas, we could look at some of this data we've been talking about. We could see a rise in, in hospitalizations and we may need to act. But, you know, we don't have all of that data yet. So, uh, you know, it is, it is difficult to deal with uncertain, uh, uncertainty, but we're trying to take a balanced and proportionate risk. Obviously, you could say, you know, everything, everything closed, etc. But we're trying not to do that, as I think uh, hopefully your viewers would appreciate. You're saying you're keeping your reservations. What are your plans for New Year's Eve? Actually, I didn't have a plan for New Year's Eve because uh, I, I find New Year's Eve uh, um, expensive, actually. So usually uh, we don't uh, go out for New Year's Eve. But we have a family meal out tonight in a restaurant. Uh, so all of us will be together tonight in the restaurant. So the reservations you mentioned weren't for New Year's Eve? I didn't have one for New Year's Eve, no. Um, but, you know, I don't usually have one for New Year's Eve. But, you know, there's... Different people will be going out on different days, right? Gillian Keegan, thank you very much indeed. Thank it's interesting, just watching some of your messages coming through, a lot of people talking about, um, about uh, lateral flow tests, not, still not being able to get them. That's interesting. Gillian yeah, yeah, exactly. Keegan has just said they're available everywhere. They are available, so yeah, keep trying, keep trying. <laughs> Look, it's time.